Officials are investigating after a 33-year-old man fell to his death this week while touring the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon, adorned with layers of vibrant red rock, stands as a remarkable natural wonder in the United States and globally. Often referred to as the basement of history, it serves as a tangible representation of Earth's ancient past, with each rock layer unveiling a distinct prehistoric era since the planet's inception. Recently, a team of experts delved into the mysteries of the Grand Canyon, unearthing findings that have the potential to reshape our understanding of history and this iconic geological formation. But what could be concealed beneath the surface of this iconic wonder? What secrets does the Grand Canyon harbor that the world is not ready to confront? Join us on this journey as we unravel the astonishing discoveries made by these scientists and explore their profound implications for the Grand Canyon's narrative. The Grand Canyon extends over approximately 277 miles in length, up to 18 miles in width, and plunges to a depth of over a mile. Its vastness and the intricate layers of rock exposed along its walls tell a captivating geological story spanning billions of years of Earth's history. The Grand Canyon story unfolds around 70 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period, when the region was a relatively flat landscape. Over time, due to groundbreaking activity and the uplifting of the Colorado Plateau, the land began to rise, setting the stage for the formation of the canyon. Around six million years ago, the Colorado River, which now flows through the region, began its journey to carve through the rising plateau. As the river delved deeper into the layers of rock, it unveiled a diverse range of geological formations, showcasing millions of years of Earth's history. The erosion process was driven by the relentless flow of the Colorado River, gradually wearing away sedimentary rock layers, predominantly composed of sandstone, limestone, and shale, constituting the canyon walls. While the river played a pivotal role, other factors contributed, including climate changes over millions of years. Colder periods increased the power of glaciers and freeze-thaw cycles, while warmer periods allowed for more abundant water flow. Additionally, the presence of resistant rock layers, such as durable sandstones, slowed erosion in some areas, resulting in the creation of dramatic cliffs and steep slopes. For visitors to the Grand Canyon, the ongoing erosion process is visible proof of the dynamic forces of nature. As the Colorado River continues its work, shaping and reshaping this remarkable natural wonder, the canyon stands as a vivid reminder of Earth's geological past. The expedition into this ancient realm commenced when a colossal rock dislodged from a towering cliff, careened down and revealed mysterious markings. Alan Krill, an astute geologist, found himself immersed in this unexpected discovery during a hiking expedition along the Bright Angel Trail in Grand Canyon National Park. Accompanied by his eager student, Krill's sharp eyes discerned an anomalous rock adorned with distinctive markings resembling ancient footprints. Interested in this secret, Krill promptly captured images of the imprints and shared them with his longtime friend and colleague, Stephen Rowland. Stephen Rowland, a renowned paleontologist at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, was celebrated for his excavations at the Washoe Hunting Ground, a historical butchering site dating back 200 years in Carson City. Analyzing the photographs sent by Krill, Roland astutely determined that these markings were not mere impressions, they were ancient fossilized tracks. In a revelation that echoed through the corridors of time, Roland proposed that these footprints were an amazing 313 million years old. This groundbreaking find marked the Grand Canyon's oldest and earliest evidence of vertebrate animals, unveiling a chapter of prehistoric life preserved in the heart of the majestic canyon. Interestingly, the striking animal imprints found on the sandy dunes are believed to have originated from an amniote, a creature that lays hard-shelled eggs. The mystery deepens as we ponder how these footprints endured the ravages of time until their unexpected discovery. A colossal rock, 
weighing hundreds of pounds, adorned with these enigmatic markings. This rock had plummeted from the Monokakacha Formation, an immense sandstone outcrop that boasts an astonishing age of approximately 314 million years. The sand, acting as a formidable preservative, played a pivotal role in safeguarding these fossilized imprints across the ages. Delving into a meticulous analysis, Roland unraveled the narrative woven into these fossilized imprints. Amazingly, they unveil the passage of two distinct reptilian beings traversing diagonally across this great boulder. Notably, one of these creatures measured a foot in length, moving with a distinctive sideways stepping pattern. In this peculiar lateral sequence, the creature maneuvers by successfully placing its left rear foot in tandem with the left front, followed by the right rear, and then the right front. While the scientific community remains inquisitive about whether these tracks were left by two separate reptilian entities or a singular creature at different points in time, an interesting nuance arises. The second set of tracks appears to exhibit a slightly swifter pace than the first. Roland astutely concludes that this lateral sequence step is a common trait among tetrapods, four-legged vertebrates. The interesting discovery of ancient animal prints on sand dunes reveals a fascinating glimpse into the past. These imprints have endured the test of time, preserved by the weighty embrace of a massive sandstone rock. Despite the groundbreaking nature of Roland's discovery, it has stirred controversy within the scientific community. Mark Niebel, a paleontology program manager at the Grand Canyon, acknowledges the significant disagreement surrounding the interpretation of tracks and the determination of rock ages. Roland's analysis faces the daunting challenge of unveiling the identity of the ancient creature responsible for these enigmatic tracks. Amidst the debates, Nebel commends Krill for the find, highlighting the rock's inconspicuous location, where countless people had unknowingly passed by without spotting these ancient imprints. The sand dunes whisper tales of a bygone era, challenging our understanding of ancient life and sparking curiosity within the scientific realm. Hidden within the towering cliffs of the Grand Canyon are secret caves that most people are unaware of. These caves, concealed within the rocks, contain a treasure trove of ancient remains, plants and animals that provide us with a fascinating glimpse into the region's distant past. Some of these caves are so narrow that they'd have to crawl on all fours to enter, while others are spacious enough to twirl around without brushing against the walls. Regardless of their size, these caves have served as ideal homes for various creatures, from wood rats and bats to birds and now extinct mountain goats and sloths. Thanks to Arizona's arid climate, the bones of these animals have been exceptionally well preserved in their dry state. This outstanding preservation has allowed researchers to uncover valuable insights into events that unfolded around 40,000 years ago during the Ice Age. The exploration of these fossils began with the Rampart Cave, discovered in 1936 at the far western end of the canyon, sitting at an elevation of 534 meters. In this cave, Scientists stumbled upon peculiar formations resembling dung piles scattered across the floor. Initially appearing as if they were recently excreted, further investigation revealed that these deposits were crafted by a colossal sloth, approximately nine feet long and weighing a whopping 500 pounds. Remarkably, this sloth had been extinct for over 10,000 years. Radiocarbon dating of these dung piles suggested an age range between 11 to 40,000 years. The analysis of the feces went beyond mere curiosity. It provided crucial insights into the dietary habits of these ancient creatures and detailed information about the plants that thrived in the region, including globe mallow, Mormon tea, saltbush, catclaw cacti, reeds, and yucca. These neat piles of wood rat droppings also acted as tangible records of undisturbed animal and plant remains existing on the Grand Canyon for thousands of years. Within the cave, scientists uncovered the skulls of Harrington mountain goats, a species first described by paleontologist Chester Stock in the 1930s. Stock believed these goats had roamed the area for at least 19,000 years, coexisting with the Shasta ground sloth, a distinct giant hairy Nothrotheriops. 
Harringtons were thought to be a smaller, short-haired version of the modern mountain goat. The cave also housed mummified bats, including condors, exceptionally well-preserved to the extent that even their skin and intricate details remained intact on certain bones. Steve Emsley, a biology professor, conducted chemical analyses on the dried tissue remnants of these condors, revealing that the Grand Canyon condors likely feasted on megafauna that eventually faced extinction. This extinction event marked the demise of the mummified bats, concluding a chapter in the fascinating story of life and extinction within the Grand Canyon's hidden caves. The journey of the Colorado River begins in the majestic Rocky Mountains of the southwestern United States, covering a vast distance of around 1,450 miles. As it roams through deep canyons and rugged terrain, it sculpts breathtaking landscapes along its path. One of the most iconic stretches of the river is the Grand Canyon, where its mighty force has crafted a spectacular natural marvel. The river navigates through deserts, cascades down waterfalls, and winds through canyons before reaching the lush wetlands and expansive delta in Mexico, ultimately flowing into the Gulf of California. The Grand Canyon section is famous for recreational activities like kayaking, canoeing, and excursions, attracting nature enthusiasts from far and wide. However, a looming threat has been identified by scientists, the potential drying up of the river if immediate action is not taken. Environmentalists express concern that the issue has been escalating over decades, with recent years highlighting a critical turning point. Major reservoirs along the river have reached alarmingly low levels due to the construction of dams and the diversion of water to rapidly growing cities like Los Angeles, Phoenix, and San Diego. One such dam, the Glen Canyon Dam, has been a point of contention. While engineers view it as an effective means of diverting the Colorado River, environmentalists argue that it poses a constant threat to the river's health since its origin. Despite the current flow of the river appearing stable at the Grand Canyon and activities like boating thriving on Nevada and Arizona's Lake Mead, signs of concern emerge at the lake's edge. Visible rock walls indicate that the water level has significantly dropped from its historical height. The Glen Canyon Dam, standing for half a century, gave rise to Lake Powell, a man-made reservoir formed by flooding the Glen Canyon. Although initially intended for hydropower, the reservoir's water levels have dwindled to the point where it can no longer generate power. This jeopardizes the water supply for California, Arizona, Mexico, and Nevada. In response to these challenges, environmental groups are urging politicians to invest in an overhaul of the Glen Dam's plumbing system. By updating the dam, there is hope that sufficient room can be created for water to flow into the Colorado River. The clock is ticking, and it is crucial to act swiftly to preserve one of the world's natural wonders before it slips away. Outside the park's borders, there are loads of uranium mines and tons of mining claims, and they pose a serious risk to keeping this incredible gorge in its prime. The Grand Canyon area is filled with uranium deposits buried deep within layers of sandstone, siltstone, and mudstone throughout the southwest. Specifically in the Grand Canyon region, uranium ore can be found in geological formations called Brescia Pipes, an area that caught the eye of miners back in the 1870s. Uranium mining near the Grand Canyon National Park began in the 1950s, kicking off operations at the Orphan Mine just two miles from Grand Canyon Village. Over the years, at least eight uranium mines have operated close to the park, and one of them, the currently active Canyon Mine, is touted as the highest grade uranium mine under development in the U.S. However, this mine poses a real threat to the springs inside the Grand Canyon. During the mid-2000, the price of uranium shot up, drawing companies to the Grand Canyon region, hoping to extract its small quantities of high-grade ore. By the end of the decade, thousands of mining claims were staked on public lands surrounding the Grand Canyon National Park. Thanks to the combined efforts of anglers, local governments, hunters, and native communities, a successful campaign led to a temporary mining ban in the Grand Canyon vicinity. One of these concerned groups is the Havasupai tribe, 
whose reservation lies deep within the canyon. They depend on a spring-fed creek flowing through their village for various needs, such as drinking, cooking, irrigating their crops, and carrying out ceremonial and cultural practices. The tribe worries that the canyon mine might pollute the underground water that sustains the springs in their village. In 2012, a 20-year ban on uranium mining was put into effect, covering around one million acres of public lands surrounding the Grand Canyon. However, this relief is only temporary. While it gives the Havasupai village a bit of a break, mining companies are eagerly waiting for the ban to be lifted or expire. In 2021, an interesting incident unfolded at the Grand Canyon, specifically at Yavapai Point, located about 430 feet below the rim. The discovery involved the remains of a 45-year-old Hungarian man named Gabor Berchi Tongsanyi. His family had reported him missing to the Las Vegas police, initiating a swift response. Upon investigation, the authorities found Tongsanyi's car and belongings at the park's visitor center. The search intensified, leading to the unexpected revelation of his body positioned 131 meters below the canyon rim. This discovery sent shockwaves through the search team. However, the plot thickened as they stumbled upon another body nearby, belonging to Scott Walsh. Walsh had last been seen disembarking from a shuttle bus at the south rim of the park in 2015. His body was located almost five kilometers away, cleverly concealed by clothing that blended seamlessly with the surroundings. The authorities were perplexed as to why these bodies had gone undetected for so long. The Grand Canyon, often likened to a layered cake of geological history, conceals a vast gap between rocks, harboring secrets unknown to the human eye for millions of years. Recent discoveries have started to unveil the mysteries within this hidden space, shedding light on why unexpected bodies keep emerging in the canyon. In the quest for more revelations within the canyon's gaps, a surprising find emerged, a large box-like structure. Raised from the depths of the canyon, speculation swirled about its contents. Could it hold the remains of Native Americans from ancient times, or did it harbor secrets about the Mogollon monster? Fears and concerns surrounding the enigmatic box prevented it from being opened, leaving the mystery intact. The Grand Canyon continues to be a source of unexpected discoveries, challenging our understanding of its hidden depths. Delving into these time-worn dwellings, archaeologists discern a bygone era stretching back eight centuries. The Tusayan ruins reveal a central plaza encircled by storage units, living quarters, and kivas, ceremonial spaces integral to Puebloan traditions. Positioned to the south, the plaza basked in the sun during colder months. Single-story rock and wood residences housed three or four main rooms, while storage spaces safeguarded dried provisions for harsh winters. Two kivas, subterranean circular structures accessed via roof holes and ladders, mirrored the ceremonial spaces used in modern Puebloan rituals. However, the presence of the resilient kaibab limestone thwarted the ancient builders from excavating deep for their kivas. In the 1930s, with the blessing of the National Park Service, archaeologists from Gila Pueblo carefully unearthed the site, promising to erect a nearby museum to preserve its legacy. The Wayside Museum of Archaeology, born in 1932, stands as proof of this commitment. A modest two-room stone and wood edifice, it seamlessly blends with the ancient Puebloan landscape. Exhibits within its walls narrate the intertwined histories of the Havasupai, Hopi, Hualapai, Navajo, and Paiute tribes, emphasizing their enduring ties to the Grand Canyon. Among the treasures showcased, a display of split twig figurines steals the spotlight. Dating back two to four thousand years, these artifacts, though not from the Tusayan ruins, underscore the enduring human presence in the Grand Canyon. As the museum unveils the rich hanging of Native American history, it pays homage to the profound connection between these tribes and the amazing Grand Canyon. The Havasupai people, also known as the Havasubasha, primarily live in Supai, a canyon within the Grand Canyon. 
It's one of the smallest American Indian nations, unique for being the only place where mail is delivered by mule. But their presence extends beyond, reaching south to Bill Williams Mountain and east to the Little Colorado River. Their dwelling location varies with the seasons. In fall and winter, they inhabit the Colorado Plateau at the canyon's rim, engaging in hunting and gathering. During spring and summer, they cultivate the Tonto Platform, including the Indian Garden, growing crops like corn, beans, squash, melons, and pumpkins. Periodic inspections of their farms prevent drought, with shelters constructed to protect crops. Their architecture is unique, a round, thatched roof made with willow and brush. At night, they position their faces to the east to prevent nightmares. Living for thousands of years in the canyon, they encountered European explorers only in 1776, when Spanish priest Francisco Garces visited Havasu Canyon. In the late 1880s, Euro-American intrusion increased, with newcomers exploring the trail set by the Puebloans, Havasupai, and ancient Hopi. The Santa Fe Railroad opened a path in 1901, bringing attention to the Havasupai. President Theodore Roosevelt visited in 1903, informing them about an upcoming park and their need to leave the Indian Garden. In 1928, the National Park Service forcefully removed Havasupai from the Indian Garden. The U.S. government confined them to a 518-acre reservation in Havasu Canyon. In 1975, President Gerald Ford returned 183,000 acres of Canyon Rim territory to the tribe. Since then, they've adapted to new circumstances, relying on tourism, farming, and wage labor for survival. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.